So if you are a parent of a child, you probably have one of these dehumidifiers in your room. This one no longer puts out a lot of steam unless you put a lot of salt in it. Uh, so the wife asked me to fix it. You'll need one of these T10 torque bits right here. You can get a set of them for like six bucks, give or take online. Remove these two screws. This thing comes right off. Go ahead and take this little cover off. You'll then separate these two. And if it's anything like mine, this will be your problem right here. There's some mineral deposit buildup. Now I've already uh, broke some of this off with my hand, so we'll do the rest here right now. I'm trying to remove this rod uh, by undoing that bolt, and um, it might have snapped off. So if you're doing this, don't do what I did. Um, try to try to clean it um, maybe with a little less force, and you won't have to do redraw it like I'm about to have to. Now, it just so happens that I broke the other one, so I'm going to have to foreshorten both of these, I think, just a, just a bit. And I think we'll just use a regular hacksaw for that to avoid noise. These look like copper screws, so I'm a little reticent to replace them with anything else because I'm afraid their electrical resistance will be too high. Just snug, not too tight. <laughs> Time! So about 15 minutes into the fix, and uh, here's what we've learned. These carbon tubes are hollow on the inside uh, all the way through, so if you do break one off like I did, you can just saw. There will already be a hole. You don't really need a, a lathe. So now let's go put this into my kid's room without testing it and see if we can burn down the house. I'm joking. Come on, Faith. All right, so we've gone ahead and filled the water line up just a hair under a max, and uh, we have a circuit that's hooked up to a, a ground fault interrupting circuit. We have our switch here to turn it on, and this will tell us how many amps we're drawing. So we'll go ahead and monitor this uh, for, say, like a half hour and see what happens. But uh, here's to not getting electrocuted. All right. Well, that's good. The green light's on. we got to change 0.18 amps. A whopping 22.2 .2 watts of power. Yeah, so read any good books lately? So if this represents the two carbon rods that we saw earlier, dangle, and this is the water level. So yeah, then you mm -hmm. fill it up with water, electricity flows between the two, the current heats up the carbon rod, starts boiling off the water, water level drops, and eventually gets below. No more uh, current flows between the two. Therefore, so this is, essentially it's kind of like an anode and a cathode, except this is alternating current. So you don't really have electrons flowing from one to the other. They kind of go back and forth. Huh, it's kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of an ingenious system. I, I always love these little simple mechanisms because it's kind of foolproof. And I'm guessing that they have a max level because if there's too much water in here, then you're having a lot of current flow through, and that might damage the circuit potentially. The only thing I'm a little worried about is the screws that I replaced uh, to hold the carbon rod in place. Um, there's potential given water and if we would put salt in here again for those going bad, uh, rusting out prematurely and the carbon rod falling off, in which case it stops working. I don't think there's a, a possibility of short circuiting or anything like that if those start corroding like the ones that were installed in here did. I think they look like they were just coated in copper. Uh, but we're up to 85 watts, and we're probably 25, 30 minutes in. And we got a good head of steam coming out of her. Hind. There you go. You can see the steam just roaring out of there. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one a success. Um, I'm going to let this run for probably another half hour or so and see what that uh, this rating does. Uh, right now we're only using 
0.7 amps at 85 watts, so still less than an old 100 watt light bulb.